<laughs> hey guys, uh, Adam Savage in my cave with a project that I've been thinking about for a long, long time. This is a Klein bottle. We've covered these on the channel before. Uh, this is uh, one in the manufacture of the inimitable, irascible, uncomfortable Cliff Stoll. Uh, and we've covered this on the channel before. We've talked about a Klein bottle. It is a uh, effectively a sort of a mathematical projection of a surface that has, of an object that has only one surface, like a Mobius strip, except uh, in three dimensions, etc. But that's not what this video is about. Uh, there are other videos to go learn about the, 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 the Klein bottle. The reason I bring this up is because if you've gone down any Klein bottle um, excursions, you will have come across the wonderful glass blower Lucas Clark. Uh, he is a preternaturally good mover of glass. And uh, in chatting with Cliff about all things Klein bottles starting uh, a long time ago, one of the things that Cliff Stoll said to Lucas was, well, the Holy Grail is the boy's surface, but that's impossible, so don't get lost trying to make one of those. And the, the spoiler alert, Lucas went and figured out a way to make a boy's surface. Now this is the boy's surface that he made. He made this for Cliff. He made two of them, in fact. One is slightly more refined than the other. The more refined one is for Cliff. The less refined one is for me uh, with the proviso that I make a mount for this appropriate to its weirdness and its station. Now, Lucas reached out to me almost a year ago. It, and it took me this long to get around to this project for really good reasons. Like uh, knowing Lucas's amazing work and what a hero Cliff stole is, I wanted this mount to be great. And I've been thinking all sorts of different ways. I lived with this, sorry, I lived with the less refined one, uh, on my bedside table for a few weeks, looking at it, holding it up. And I now have a point of view on how this should be displayed. And I'm, that's what this video is. I'm going to make a museum mount for the boy's surface. What is a boy's surface? You need more math education than me to say it, to understand it, that here is what I understand. And I'm gonna say some words. I don't exactly, I know that these words are roughly correct, but I don't know precisely what they mean. A boy's surface is a mathematical projection of the inversion of a sphere. Like a Klein bottle, right? Here in a Klein bottle where the, where the mouth goes through the surface of the bottle, this is where it cracks into the fourth dimension. And even that is a phrase which I understand is technically correct, even though I don't quite understand in here what that precisely means. The same is true for the boy's surface. I understand the terms around which, I understand that there are terms around which it's described, the mathematical projection of the inversion of a sphere. I really don't quite understand how that translates to this object that feels like one of the bones of my inner ear writ large. However, it is a preternaturally beautiful object um, and I spent a long, 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 long time staring at it before its structure started to become at least somewhat understandable to me. Um, I think that's the less refined one. I have to check. At any rate, my holder should be able to accommodate either one. Uh, that's what we're doing today. We're making a museum mount for a boy's surface. It's going to take probably three days. That's my guess. Oh, and I'm gonna use a new base material, very exciting. All right, let's get started. I wanna talk about the progression of what I was thinking about mounting this. Uh, Lucas supplied a couple of cloches. I guess that's what you call a bell jar. He called them a cloche, which I love. Um, and these were for displaying these as, a, as an idea, potentially. My issue with these is that, uh, is that, okay, this object has uh, trilateral symmetry. Is that actually a word? It probably is. This has three loops <laughs> that repeat, uh, and it it sort of has a triangular symmetry under certain circumstances, right? When you lay it down, you look at it from above, 
It's got a triangular symmetry when you lay it like that or like that. And as I look at this, I find that a less interesting way to display it. I mean, you could just do that and have this on a black base. Right, you could, you could put this on a black base. My issue is, is that a museum mount, any kind of mount wants to engage the viewer in a story about where you're looking and why. And when I look at this, even if I raise this up in here, even if I, sorry, even if I raised this up inside here, I still end up with a story. Yeah, I mean, in a way, I feel like it needs the object to be less interesting than I think it actually is. And when I've spent some time holding this thing up and looking at it, what I found was if I see if it's placed in a in a in a way in which it's one part of its symmetry is immediately obvious, my brain tends to erase the other possibilities for symmetry that hurt my head when I spin this around and look at this. So part of me does not want to just display it like where the symmetry is really apparent. Part of what I want to do is display it so that the symmetry is off and it makes you keep looking at it to sort of figure out where the symmetry is. That's how I want to display it. So I don't want to display it flat. I don't want to display it as, a, you know, in the 120 degrees where all the stuff is shooting off. Why do you keep pulling off? I want to display it slightly off kilter because the story is its symmetries are not immediately apparent. That's the story. Whereas if I displayed it just like this, you'd be like, oh, okay, it's a three-lobed thing. That's kind of neat. It's way weirder than that, which is, okay. So I think I've done a reasonable explanation. I made a, a this circle a few weeks ago. And my idea is that I can hold it in that orientation slightly off its main kilter like this. And I dig it. Um, what, what I need, though, is I need some cups that will grab the edges of the glass. Cups like this that I experimented with in brass. So what we're about to do is we're about to take a piece of brass rod like this that I had here. We're going to bend it into a circle again, like I did. Then we are going to drill some holes for threaded rod, 632 threaded rod here. And then we're going to make uh, three little uh, 632 threaded plungers that I can use to tighten in and hold this thing in its orientation. I hope that that is enough strength to hold on to it. Um, I've been to shops where they make museum displays, man, and it's a it's a it's a, a difficult enterprise. It is a really I, I, one I deeply deeply respect, and the reason this project has taken so long for me to like think about it and get back to it is I really wanted to do it right. I wanted to do it like as to the best of my ever loving abilities. Just cut myself again. I, it's going to be time to go home soon, but I wanted to show you this before I left, which was here is one of my cup plungers. It's threaded on the inside. How am I going to make sure that it has a nice profile? I'm going to thread it onto this. Actually, hold on, I'm bleeding. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I've maybe I've had it for the day. Maybe we're done for the day. But I want to. Uh... Great. So here I chuck it onto here, and then I take it onto the sander and slowly uh, shape it. I don't know where my brain's at. My, I'm cutting myself the ribbons, and I keep on shooting stuff that I'm not shooting. So I am gonna leave now because clearly my head is not in the game. However. I've achieved something of a stable state. Stable state.
So what part of me wants to do with this? Is think about it. <laughs> I, I have some ideas, but this works way less good than I was hoping it would. So now what do I do? I think I'll take this one home. This is the last refined one, and I'm just going to think about it. I mean... Should I just be drawing, going for this? Should I just be doing that so that it sits in there? I had this whole grand plan for its, but like what I could do is I could make a, um, I can make a little pedestal for it that's only that wide with a little <laughs> right up here to hold it so it doesn't bang against the side. I mean, mostly this is going to sit I'm talking myself out of this complexity. Mostly because this doesn't really work. I mean, I guess I could make this work if I glued, if I JB welded some pips to the lobes of this boy's surface and that those would get captured inside here. But these don't hold, it's just too slippery. And even with a, here's what I'm worried about. If I put a little bit of neoprene rubber in there and it's under pressure, that is just, it's an it's asking for this thing to move over the years, right? This is a museum piece. This is a museum mount. I need it to like not be volatile and not be under tension. It needs to just hold it. And the problem is this thing has no I mean I I I I I can get it to come back out again. Can't, but no, I can't, actually. I can't get it to come back out again. So I have to either hold it like this or hold it like this. And it's... Uh, all right. We're just going to... We're just going to take these home tonight and we're going to look at them and maybe I have an idea for some... for some rich light. Hi. <laughs> I know, it's weird, right? Like I opened this video saying, I spent, a, I spent months and months thinking about how to do this right. Um, and I was wrong. Uh, so I've spent the night thinking about it. I brought, the, uh, I brought the boy's surface home and I looked at it and I had this other whole feeling about it, frankly, which was that this, this is... I love this solution. The solution makes me very happy and I'm super pleased with the execution of it. And to be fair, like I'm going to use this on something else because I think it's I think it's a pretty reasonable way to stabilize something, not this, but something. You could get this to live in this with glue, which is not a great solution. And what's the problem with glue? Well, the problem with glue is that I'd also want to be able to pull this out. And I was thinking about this last night and I was thinking this is an object meant to be held. Uh, so one of the other things that I've been toying with is actually just making a base for this cloche so that this sits like this and that you can pull the cloche off and you can hand it to someone and they can grok it and love it and they can put it back in the cloche. So I'm going to do a total reset here. And I have a new material for this. I have a new material for this, which is really exciting to me. Say you want to make a base of a bell jar. What are you going to make that base out of? Like, well, if you bought it at the store, it would just be like black. It would be like painted black. So frequently it would be wood that was painted black, which is fine. But like... I'm going to lay the whole base out of wood and then I'm going to seal it and it's going to take several coats to get to look monolithic, like a single thing. There are other engineering resins I've used in the past, like Ren Shape, which is um, like, the, like the base of something. This is it's an expensive solution, but it's also like it's not going to last. 
that's my feeling, right? This soft material is not like what you want as a lasting, uh, as a lasting base material. And so I found rich light. I found. Um, I met an artist who introduced me to the concept of rich light. I reached out to rich light. I bought a four by eight sheet of two and a half inch thick rich light. Is that exactly what it is? Two and a quarter, two and a quarter inch thick sheet of rich light. This is a resin infused paper. Um, it's much harder. You can still carve it, but it's easily two or three times as hard as Ren shape. It's monolithic in the same way. Everywhere you finish it will give you the same finish. Um, and it was developed for, it was developed as an engineering resin, but it's structural. Like I would never make a strut for something or like a, a kind of a hinge for something out of this stuff. It just has not, it has not the tensile strength, but this stuff does. And so having just purchased a big chunk O rich light, I'm going to turn a cloche base out of that stuff here. And I think, I think... And if I get this right, I'm going to give it a little bit of a, um, I'm going to give it a little bit of a light because I think this object also, yeah. So I think I'm going to put a light in the base of this that you can turn on and be like, what the hell is that thing? And then you pull off the cloche. Uh, if I, if I, I, I really love the idea of making a custom brass handle that's glued to this cloche. But I'm not going to worry about that just yet because that's a, yeah, that's a thing. But I wanted to lift it like the, like the phone thing in Batman, you know, that cake decorating cover that used to be on Batman's, Commissioner Gordon's phone. I could be getting all sorts of details mixed up. Suffice to say, it's not like I spent a, a, a year like doing drawings about how this was supposed to go. I just, I really wanted to spend a long time pondering and thinking about how how this should be displayed and the flavor with which it's displayed. And what that when I'm finally ready to go, it doesn't mean that I finally thought of the right design. It means that I, I guess I just finally feel like I've thought about it enough to execute something. And if that doesn't work, well, I can execute something else. And that's exactly what happened. This is some refined brass work from me, uh, better than my usual, than my... It is an improvement over my usual output, and I learned a lot doing this. Hi, I'm getting up my heat because it's so freaking cold. Oh my God. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut two pieces of... So I'm gonna cut out a couple pieces big enough to make circles, then we're going to go through the process of enrounding them. All right. I'm being stupid, not leaving enough room between things. I don't want to say I'm stupid. I am not planning correctly. Let's say it that way. This way.
using my table saw, I have turned this into the, the closest approximation to a circle I can with my big blades. Uh, this stuff is, uh, it can be tough to cut through. The table saw blade's doing great. My bandsaw blade is iffy. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use my giant, is this a three inch? Good God, no, it's a four inch. Ha <laughs> ha, my four inch Forstner bit. I am going to uh, put this onto my drill press. Actually, I think I'm gonna do it on the mill. I'm gonna put this on the mill and I'm gonna bore a hole down to about half an inch from the top here. And that will provide me a platform inside this to grab it with the jaws of my lathe and, and round it, add the slot for the cloche, add the topography for this thing, and uh, hopefully finish this out. I am making one for me and one for Cliff here, but the secret sauce is, gives me two chances to get it right. Like whichever one is better goes to Cliff. That's usually how it works when I'm making something for somebody else that I want to. So I make two and then get the better one and then I get the other one. Ah, all right, so that's gonna be zero. Well then, look at you, big mess. Oh, that is so pretty. Okay. One more pass. By the way, I'm running this at, because um, I know, feeds and speeds. What do you run a four inch Forstner bit at? I'm running it at about 1300 RPM and that seems to be pretty good. I'm doing it in three passes so I don't overheat this. And there we go. Wow, we that's messy. <laughs> Incredible. All right. These are ready for the lathe. Let's go. So I've worked out the parameters here. So this will check in here, Kosa. Cut in 200,000. Then I'm going to come in. And 
down two hundred thousand. Do a test for that. I think that should be right. Here's how it will look. Bingo. That's nice. Nice positive fit. A little bit of slop, just what I wanted. Testing out both. Yep, they both fit. Great. That was the easy cut. Now I'm going to do more cutting on these. Ooh. I wanted to show you the tool I used to cut this groove because it's neat. So when you want to cut a groove like this, um, you can shape a tool to cut that groove. You could also try and use a cutoff tool, but the problem with a cutoff tool is that it's straight. And when it's cutting a curve, well, it's gonna run into that curve. Hence, this cutoff tool which actually has a curve built into it. Yeah, I picked this up as part of a purchase of a bunch of machine equipment from someone. It was like in a lot that I bought and I didn't even see it in the auction, but it's fantastic. So, <sighs> remove this. Okay, so we're currently at a good spot. I was thinking about how I wanted to hold this up. Uh, and it is definitely in this orientation to see the trilateral symmetry. Uh, and then I was thinking, what if I had just little posts? So I just chose a two inch diameter circle and I put up some posts and those worked great. And then actually I was a little loose, so I went with a 1.9 inch diameter. And these are little carbon fiber tubes I have tons of. So I liked the 1.9 inch diameter so much, I went and I drilled it out of uh, my, my uh, base. You always, you practice on yours and then you execute on the clients. Um, so we're gonna just, uh, we're gonna pop this in here. This should be a nice uh, pressure fit. Oh, let me give you a better shot. Oh, Ooh, that was a little tighter than I thought. Okay, so wait a second. This is the... Oh, I keep losing track of what's the good one. This is the good one. Okay, so this one's mine. Yes, better. Better, bellissimo. Okay, but I can't quite do the same whole pattern. For, oh, actually, that's... Oh, do I have them too high? Is that the problem? I think I do. Oh, yeah, look at that. I can totally lower this. Great. That's great. See, I like that. That way, this isn't rattling around. You can move it around. I think I could even lower this just a little bit more. Let's see here. Great. Yes, I dig it. Looking good. Fabulous. I feel like I, no, no, actually I think that is the right, 
distance to hold them. Yeah, excellent. All right, so uh, now I'm ready to drill the holes in the hero base. Um, because I found that the uh, that the hero uh, boy surface is a little, just a little tight, just a little tight there. I'm going to go with 1.95 instead of two inch uh, diameter for the spacing on that. Um, so we're going to put this on the mill. Um, when you want to drill holes of an even spacing around a diameter, you can do that in a couple of ways. You can go get a rotary table and you can bolt it to your table and you can indicate it in and then you can spin the number of degrees. I have three holes I'm drilling, which would make them 120 degrees offset. And uh, mo mo uh, rotary tables are most often sold with indexes for the common divisions, which is great because you don't even, you, yeah. However, the DRO, the digital readout of this mill is way better for hole patterns than an indexing, but than a, a rotary table, way better, way more precise, just fantastic. So what I've got set up here. Oh, right. So uh, clear, clear, clear. Excellent. So now I'm going to get this set up on a rough zero. That is, that is within 10 thou in any direction of the center. More than enough accuracy for me. So now I have this zeroed out. Uh, so now what I do is I go to the DRO and I say that and that are my zero points, the X and Y. So then I go to function, bolt. Uh, I enter the bolt hole center is zero and zero, which I just recalibrated. There we go. Bolt diameter, 1.9. I'm going to do 1.95, enter. Number of holes is three, enter. Bolt hole angle, that's the starting hole angle. Zero is fine. And now we go. So I say go, and it tells me first, get this top one to zero. There we go, get that top one to zero. This last two, that's two ten thousandths of an inch, five microns. I can accommodate little <laughs> vagaries like that. So we get this to zero and we drill our first hole. Now we go back here and we say next hole. And it says, so all you do with the hole pattern is you keep on you keep on bringing these things to zero. There we go, and then this one. Yeah, there we go. It's a bunch. Oh, whoop, I went too far. I thought that was an eight. There we go. It amazes me I can turn a dial and see how close. There, are. two ten thousands, plenty, plenty. Now we drill the second hole. I'll give you a better view. I forgot to hit record for the second hole. I drilled the second hole without telling you. I'm so sorry. All right, so now we've drilled the second hole. We go to the third hole and only have to move this dimension. Ah, good. Ooh, lovely. Oh, here, I'll give you a better close-up now. Yeah, I can get rid of those, that's no problem. Now I'm gonna cut three pieces of the, of the carbon fiber rod. First piece I cut to a measurement, second piece I cut to the first piece. Third piece I cut to the second, uh, actually third piece I cut to the first piece. Excellent.
but ah, very happy. Very happy, nice and good. Next, excellent. And that extra 50 thou or 25 thou is really nice. Now it's no longer, yeah, that's great. It's not moving. Let's just double check this. Fitting and testing everything. Well, that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think I can lower these down a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's sitting nicely on its ass. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Very cool. Okay, so lighting, lighting, yeah, hold on. My sincere apologies about that. I was nearly opening up my drawer of lighting and I have some 12 volt auto lamps here, which might be just perfect. These are working nicely for me. So what I'm going to do is uh, they've got this little step in them. I'm gonna machine that step into the center of these and uh, then I'm gonna wire it from the underside. Yeah. Excellent, okay, so. Now that's my center, and I'm gonna undo this. Excellent. We're going to zero out our quill. This and then we're gonna do the stock of this thing, which is yeah, I've got one there. Ah, I didn't leave enough room there, so that's fine. I was complaining before because I didn't have the correct sockets for these bulbs, but I found them. I only have two, but that's enough. I'm gonna mount to this one and this will go to the switch, but I'll worry about the switch later. Right now, I'm just gonna get the light bulb mounted and I'm gonna use a cup. I'm gonna mount the light bulb like this. I'm gonna use a little standoff here, mount it there with the screw, and that screw will go through here and into the body to hold this. Um, so I need like, uh, right, I need a couple things. Um, I got them in. There's one. There's another. The glue is setting, but now since I want to sink a 440 in there to hold the uh, the lighting housing, the light bulb housing, I'm going to put a 440 threaded insert in here. And then we knock out There's always a little twisty pin in there, and then I can put all this stuff back. Note to self, order more 440 helicoils. So the really nice thing about helicoils is they provide a really positive mechanical grab. Um, I don't like threading in soft material, and the thread, thread repair threads, like the coil threads, uh, really allow you some flexibility in that regard. I'll put this one here. I feel like we can light this up. Is that really true? Yeah, I think it might be. Okay, so, uh, right, I think that's negative, that's positive. Let's just double check. Nope. Oh, right, because it seems to be reversed. Yep, there we go. Good. 
good enough for a test. And we'll twisty these together. I see the light is working. Okay. Oh, come on. feel like, yeah, I want to, let's see if there's a dish that I can put it to eat. Is that the, no, that's an it. I'm just gonna. Now I think that's nice. See, I think that is not to, uh, not too bright, not too bright. I have, uh, I've made a nice little slice of, look at that, it's nice and flush mount. That's just a piece of Teflon that I sliced on the lathe, popped in there. Three quarter inch Teflon, three quarter inch bit, three quarter inch hole, and then this guy goes on there, and then voila, look at that. Okay, so now, uh, right, there's one more. <laughs> the funny thing is, is there's like, I'm mostly done with the mechanical aspect of both of these, but there's still like a day of work. Um, among the things that that day includes are uh, figuring out how the switch attaches in here. It's gonna be a push button, not a momentary, it's gonna be a latching push button like that. I wanna put some feet on here, three of them. And then I want to turn this, which I think is actually going to be like a whoop, like a little ball, uh, because I think that looks great. And this is lovely. It sits on its base. It moves around. I'm happy with how it's going. I'm happy with how it's going. Okay, I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I think that's a reasonable spot to stop today. I'll see you guys later. A couple weeks have passed. It's probably a lot longer than that. And I was about to uh, start to work out the power into it. And so I'm going to do this by installing a switch here towards the bottom Two, installing some strain relief for a wire out of the back. Three, doing some machining inside here, both for the switch and for the spacing. So to allow some more room in there. I can't remember what number I'm on, but I also may end up putting a bottom on this. I might not. I, who knows? We'll see. Um, but I've got some uh, annular cutters that are the right sizes. I'm going to, and I'm not afraid to use them. And so most of this is going to happen on the mill. That's not too far.
from, from, from Rama to Mama. You heat up. You let me know what you've got. Excellent. Good. Oh, yeah. That is really pretty. I'm very happy about that. And that's a momentary. I'm sorry, that's not a momentary. That's actually a on-off. I love me and my wire lugs. I really do. So negative comes in here and goes to there. So that's one. Positive comes through here. Positive goes to the switch, which then goes to the hot lead. So that is the positive. And if I plug it all in, it should all light up. Okay, let's see if it lights up. Hey, it does. I love it. Excellent. There it is. Well, now that's not very bright. What happened? Oh. Because I didn't plug it in. It was going off residual. To be honest, I didn't really know that that happened like that. But let's do it. So now we plug it in. There we go. So now we put that on there. We put that on there. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have a lovely close display. I don't think I'm going to put a brass ring on the top. I just, I've, I, I, it's still a few weeks before I deliver this to Cliff. And I, I haven't been able to, I've drawn a bunch of different, things to grab up here, and none of them have really captured me. So I may still add it. If I do, I'll film it. If I don't, I won't. So the next shot is either, the next sequence is either me doing that or not. And then the next sequence would just me, me delivering this to Cliff with Lucas. All right. I'm kind of curious how this turns out. <laughs> You want to give a preamble as to yeah. the impossibility of this? Outstanding! <laughs> He's kept it secret from me. Whoa! Now, I put oh. the light on this, and I put it to specifically just as a home object, because I figured Are you it's an aware of what this is? I am, I am. Is that it sits about here in the library so you can see it lit and you can see its pieces but um yeah it's um i have version 0 0.1 of that is that mine oh, oh. i i, I was never given anything that's it uh, it came first thing oh, telling me about stand. stop here's this thing it's but it, it's a fool's errand never attempt it I, that's what done. i love is never attempt it oh, well done well done Oh. If you look oh, on the other oh, side, oh, I think you, I think you sort of uh, overconstructed. That that is my want. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> Outstanding. Whoa! Both in the glass, the mount, and the mat. Well, you inspired this man. Wow. <laughs>
You, oh, you just, told you told Lucas it was impossible. <laughs> That's my favorite part of the story. Phenomenal. Well done. The coolness of it is the mathematician boys, the yeah. German mathematician who lives up. Someone had said that you cannot immerse the projective plane in three space. He thought about it and came up with the boy surface. The projective, well, okay, what's the projective plane? If you have a, four, a piece of paper in the fourth dimension, perfectly valid, bring it into the third dimension, nothing changes. I can, in fact, bring it into the second dimension, still nothing right, changes. Right, right. <laughs> right? yeah, it's a two-dimensional yeah. object. Mm -hmm. In general, though, if I have some bubble or jelly bean in the fourth dimension, I can have it to, to bring the third dimension, to reduce its dimensionality, uh, means um, I can, there's two types of compromises. One is an embedding, the other is an immersion. To immerse something in the fourth dimension, from the fourth dimension into three space, you make compromises, like there may be a fold. Okay. It may self-intersect. So you may have something where a piece of paper comes through itself. Comes through itself. Uh, like a bishop's cat. Right. You know, where it sort of has a little yeah, yeah. funny oddball figure eight if you do a cross section through it. So all of these things are the standard actually, oh um uh, there are compromises when you bring it from a higher dimension to a lower one. I take a picture of this character, and the photograph printed on, you know, you take a Duncan and Dectal, you develop it, you print it, and oh. you get something that has squashed his entire face into two dimensions. I can tell the outline of it perfectly well, and there's an implication that there's a back of the head but we never see it. Right. There's an implication that the eyes are in front of the ears, but we can't prove it. <laughs> that photograph is an immersion, not an embedding. We've lost some things. Specifically, um, any folds in his skin have disappeared in embedding it into a photograph. Oh, if you pop the stack, go back to... Um, the projective plane. The projective plane is a Mobius loop this way and a Mobius loop this way. You can't make it no matter how hard you try. <laughs> it's not a makeable thing. Right. Boys said, but we can immerse it in three space. And that's what you've created. You've made an immersion, not an embedding. An embedding would actually look correct. That the that, that <laughs> not even look for it. Um, um, and in a fine bottle, oh, heart be still. In a fine bottle, the um, there's only one ring of a self intersection. When you immerse the projective plane, this thing here into three space, you're going to get a whole slew of self intersections, all of which are perpendicular to each other. So you're outlining here that you've got the, the target universe has three orthogonal uh, planes, X, Y, and Z. Oh. And notice the self-intersection here, the self-intersection here, and the self-intersection here. All These are, they're orthogonal and and they're mutually exclusive, right. except at the place called the triple point, which is right there. Missing also from this model, um, I would have told you if you had told me we were making this, <laughs> is a, um, <coughs> See how this intersects here? The glass would continue to self-intersect. I'm sorry, um, I can put my finger in here, mm -hmm. which allows you to exhaust the hot air when you did the weld. Done properly, <laughs> done properly, there would be a little D-shaped window 
Oh, right that would have made it easier. <laughs> right over here. And right over here. <laughs> see, 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 point out. Right there. <laughs> right there. Oh, and right there. Um, um, though that would in turn have sealed this, so you'd be unable to make the glasswork wouldn't be possible then because no, it'd be popping. It's just hard. <laughs> so, so I imagine. I can, I can do seal. I, I, yeah, I, the I, seals I can imagine, but how do you do the seal with the enclosed album? So there's two methodologies. If you, uh, yeah, if you balance out the energies of uh, how much energy is in the glass, so that's how much it's moving, how much gases and stuff from you know, the environment that was inside of it, and how hot those are, you can, if you give a little flash, it adds more energy into those gases, and if the glass is moving, it'll push out. And if you have too much, you grab a little bit, and pull some of that energy into you, shrinks those gases down. Are you serious? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Where is it? The other version is... Wait, 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 wait. You, oh, you're saying... It's, it's, it's hard to wait. tell when the glass isn't moving. Yeah. Uh, but do it. Although, technically, you can't still move the glass in mind. Yeah, of course. So, clearly... So, know, what uh, I want to do is balance it so that it's a... Ah, now, if you want to try and balance it, you just got to use the, uh, the flex of the glass. Let's see if I can... Oh, you've made it to be... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so beautiful. It's beyond being physically beautiful, it's mathematically just delicious. The... The way you've made this world along here, the triple point, it's like, Helbert and Boys would be so proud of you. I mean, I think this is probably one in the entire globe. This doesn't exist anywhere else. You're, I, I, I can't say it. You're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs>